Hey, good afternoon everybody. Welcome to this edition of Touring with Travis. My name is Travis Gilbert. I'm the Educator and Collections Coordinator for the Old Baldy Foundation. And as I promised, we'd be bringing you to a very special location on the mainland today. And that is the old Smithville Burying Grounds behind me, where many of our lighthouse keepers and many of our life-saving service members are resting in peace. So we're going to explore this cemetery and bring you to some of the tombstones of the most notorious and of the most famous characters in the story of Baltic Island's history. So uh, let's uh, get started here. One of the first people that is buried back here that I want to show you, or the frank of the matter is, we're not sure if he's buried here. His name is Benjamin Smith, and you know him as the last of the Smith family members to have uh, owned Baldhead Island. And he died in 1826, and uh, after a long career tenure as the governor of North Carolina from 1810 into 1811, he served in the Continental Army. Uh, he claimed to have been an aide-de-camp to George Washington during the American Revolution. Uh, we're not sure if that's true or not. It seems like when George Washington visited Benjamin Smith in the 1791 Southern Tour of the Southern States, the two didn't quite know one another. So it seems kind of odd that Gen uh, George Washington wouldn't remember one of his aide-de-camps in the American Revolution. Uh, regardless, he did serve at least in South Carolina in the Continental Line. And again, a governor of the state from 1810 to 1811, and the last of the Smiths to own Baldhead Island. Uh, you can see there, it also says uh, Sarah Dry Smith. That was his wife who passed away in 1821. That's how Benjamin Smith actually inherited Baldhead Island. Baldhead Island left the Smith family in the mid 18th century and was owned for a time by William Dry. He was the customs collector for the Port of Wilmington, just upstream from Smithville or Southport on the Cape Fear River. And uh, it was because William Dry had no male heirs that Benjamin Smith inherited Baldhead Island because of course Sarah Dry Smith was William Dry's daughter. And since William Dry had no sons, the ownership of the island fell into the hands of Sarah Dry Smith and Benjamin Smith being her husband, he acquired the island until he passed away in 1826. Now we don't know if he actually rests here in the Old Smithville burying grounds because there's also a uh, grave in Old Brunswick, about 13 miles north of us on the Cape Fear River, at the ruins of St. Philip's Anglican Church. It was said that he was buried here in Smithville because it was too foggy and a storm was blown up the night that he died, and they were unable to get a barge or a boat to make the trek 13 miles upstream to where his wife rests again in Old Brunswick Town. So there, as a resort, they, they buried him here in Smithville, and it is uh, not certain whether he was reinterred up there to Brunswick Town uh, or not. Uh, but certainly he has a grave uh, and a tombstone up there that was placed by the Grand Lodge of the North Carolina Freemasons in the early 20th century. And he also has a gravestone here. So uh, kind of ironic that we don't know exactly where he was buried, uh, but he rests here. Now he had a, uh, a resort or a beach house, probably the first uh, kind of beach house or vacation house, second home, if you will, on Baldhead Island. It was called Sea Castle and it was located near, somewhere near where the marina is today. We're not quite sure obviously where it is, um, but it was somewhere around the lighthouse, somewhere around uh, the marina today. And Benjamin Smith was responsible for uh, helping establish the location for not only the original lighthouse, finished around 1794, but additionally for the construction of Old Baldy in 1817, the second lighthouse established on Baldhead Island. Benjamin Smith was instrumental in establishing or creating the location. And of course, the most, uh, you know, the largest contribution he has to establishing both of those lighthouses is he's the man that donates 10 acres of land on his island and donates that land to first the state of North Carolina 
and later the state deeds it to the federal government to create the lighthouse reservation that Old Baldy is located at now. So a very long uh, history there and uh, we're lovely to have it. So a second uh, grave, if you're out there listening, my allergies are getting the best of me, so I apologize. I'm probably going to sneeze in a minute. If you're out there listening, give us a shout out in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Let us know where you're listening from and you can... <laughs> there we go. I knew it. Bless me. <laughs> allergies are incredible here in southeastern North Carolina in April. But let me know where you're listening from. Give us a shout out. Drop a line in those comments. I'd love to hear from you all out there. Like Andy, my family has the biggest house on Lord Street, Hewitt. I do know that, Andy. Yeah, it's a, a, yeah, absolutely. You're not too far from this location. Thank you for tuning in, Andy. Anybody else out there listening, give us a shout out. So the next uh, grave is going to be familiar to you bald head folks. Charles Norton Swan. He, of course, is the principal keeper of Cape Fear Light Station from 1903 to 1933. This is the lighthouse that is established in the year 1903 out where the Bald Head Island Conservancy is today. And Emmeline is asking about Benjamin Smith. Is he the one who died bankrupt and his corpse was to be payment? Dan and Emmeline. It was Emmeline. That is the exact Benjamin Smith. And Jeff. Jeff is listening uh, from Raleigh. Uh, Chris is not with me today right now. We uh, got a boat ride over to the mainland uh, thanks to the generosity of our uh, neighbor over on Bald Head. But uh, I will send uh, my or your compliments to Chris, Jeff. Thanks for tuning in. But yes, this is the grave of Charles Norton Swan, the principal lighthouse keeper of that lighthouse that was over towards the Bald Head Island Conservancy today. He served for 30 years as principal keeper out there. Uh, his wife, his first wife, is located just over the ways here. That is uh, the tombstone of his first wife, Marie Rose. Uh, Marie Rose and Captain Charlie met down in Charleston. When Captain Charlie joined the lighthouse service, he first had a, a desk job of sorts in Charleston, and it was in that city he met Marie Rose. Now, Marie Rose died here in Southport in the year 1915 to tuberculosis, but it was only after they had a slew of kids, the eldest being uh, Margaret Swan, Margaret Swan Hood, eventually her married name who has left behind just those wonderful oral histories that I've shared with you all. And I said uh, let me see if I can make out the epitaph here. A precious one from us has gone. Uh, we loved is stilled. A place is vacant in our home which never can be filled. God in his wisdom has recalled the boon his love had given and though the body slumber here, the soul is safe in heaven. So really a, a lovely epitaph for the first wife of Captain Charlie, Marie Rose. Of course, Captain Charlie, in a few uh, months uh, after, he marries the nurse of his life wife, and that is Bessie here. Bessie is Captain Charlie's second wife, who served as the nurse for Marie over there when Marie was at the age, uh, her late stages of life. Now, Captain Charlie, he died in 1964. You can see he was a uh, Spanish-American War veteran. He served on the USS Cheyenne in the Spanish-American War. Now, Captain Charlie's father is just right behind us here. And Captain Charlie's father, Henry Swan, you can see here on it, former master of frying pan Shoals light ship. And he was a uh, immigrant. He came from Normandy or Norway, excuse me, in 1830. He died in 1901 at the age of 71 years old. So Captain Charlie over there followed in his father's footsteps. Captain Charlie actually first served on frying pan light ship where his father was captain. And that is when he got his start in the lighthouse service. They eventually sent him to that desk job in Charleston where he met Marie over there. And Captain, Charlie, or Captain Charlie's father, Henry Swan, lived out the rest of his life here in Southport. And we have Captain Charlie's mother right here, Caroline Swan, 
also from Norway. So a lovely little little family plot here in the old Smithville burying grounds of the Swan family. Both Captain Charlie, his first wife Marie, his second wife Bessie, and his mom Caroline, and his father, the captain of frying pan lightship, Henry Swan. So lots of history within eyesight over here. Uh, I'm one of those crazy nerds that love cemeteries. I go on vacations and I go on trips and I tramp around uh, cemeteries looking for gravestones. It's uh, one of the most eccentric things about me, <laughs> but I can't lie. I gotta be myself. Uh, that's who I am. I love it. You can learn so much from cemeteries. You can trace lineage all within eyesight. It's really just a wonderful experience to go to these old cemeteries materials and we're so fortunate so so fortunate to have um, this burying ground here in Southport uh, I am missing one up here. I'm sorry, it gets a little crazy to uh, find your way around these cemeteries though because everything starts to look the same and uh, I am actually going to head this way see what's going on out there we have uh, my mom, Kathy Gilbert. I want to wish my son a happy birthday on Monday. We love your tours. Yes, yes, thanks, Mom. Uh, my birthday is on Monday, folks. I'm getting old. <laughs> so, uh, yes, we're, I'm looking forward to uh, perhaps having a beach day on Monday. It's supposed to be sunny and nice, unlike today. Kathy White, I love to explore this burying ground. So intriguing. And she is saying that I'm a crazy cemetery nerd too. Well, thanks. Uh, <laughs> you're not leaving me hanging there. Uh, you know, uh, it's uh, nice to know that there are other folks that like cemeteries too. And Phil is listening. Hello, Phil. It's great to hear from you this afternoon. Phil lives not too far from the cemetery here. All right, another uh, gravestone I want to bring you to here is John L. Price and John E. Price, all right? So John E. Price was, um, or excuse me, John L. Price, pardon me here. That was his father there. John L. Price is one of the original surfmen that served in the Cape Fear Life Saving Service on Baldhead Island. This is a precursor to the Coast Guard that is established on East Beach, just north of the modern day Shoals Club. It's built in 1882, 1883, and it serves out there until 1913, 1915, roundabout. And uh, 1915, of course, is when the Life Saving Service merges with the U.S. Revenue Cutter Service to create the modern Coast Guard as we know it today. And John L. Price served as first surfman, so he was an enlisted man. He wasn't the officer. The officer was known as a keeper, but he was the first enlisted man, the first surfman. And when John L. Watts, the keeper who died in 1911, when he passed away on Baldhead Island, John L. Price served as the interim keeper, the interim officer in charge, until Samuel Brinkman could be appointed as keeper of the new Cape Fear Coast Guard station. And I'm going to be showing you the grave of John L. Watts in just a minute. And just as uh, veterans have flags and markers on gravestones, uh, many of the federal services that we interpret at Old Baldy Lighthouse have markers too. You can see this is uh, my dear friend Dick from up in Cape Cod uh, makes these and his wife Pat. And you can see uh, 1871 to 1915, and that is the logo of the Life Saving Service. We have pins with that logo. We're going to work on replacing these flags here. Mackie Miller. Well, if you're eccentric, so am I. One of the first things I visit when I travel, even in Wilmington, love cemeteries. Yes, we have Oakdale Cemetery in Wilmington. And just down the street from my home, we have the old Episcopal or Anglican churchyard at St. James Episcopal Church. Uh, some lovely, lovely gravestones in the Wilmington area. Absolutely, Mackie. <laughs> so I'm glad I'm in uh, good company here. And Jeff is saying, Garrett says, happy birthday on Monday. Well, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, we are, I'm going to find my way here. I'm going to bring you some other gravestones or tombstones. It's amazing. So there are two other cemeteries in Wilmington where uh, there are luminaries or characters in the story of Baldhead Island that rest in peace. 
Uh, Samuel Brickman and Dunbar Davis, they're actually in Norwood Cemetery, uh, which is um, over the ways. I'm not going to unfortunately bring you there today, but they're located a little bit elsewhere. So James Pinner here, he was a keeper at Old Baldy and the Cape Fear River Lights in the early 20th century. And then right next to him, uh, we have Samuel Pinner Newton, who uh, has a, a story to be told as well on the history of Baldhead Island. Lots of Newtons. I'm going to be bringing you to a Newton gravestone uh, in just a few minutes here. And he was the keeper uh, from Old Baldy when Old Baldy was re-established after the American Civil War. So folks, uh, drop me a line out there as I'm walking to this next tombstone. I'd love to hear from you. Give me a shout out, drop a comment. Let me know where you're listening from and your connection to Baldhead Island. Of course, if you want us to elaborate on something, let us know and I'll be glad to do so. All right, the next one here, this is one of my favorite characters. Uh, Emmeline, any cemetery over on Baldhead Island? Well, Emmeline, uh, we, uh, there's certainly no formal cemeteries, but I'll let you know that there have been bodies found on uh, Baldhead Island. So certainly there are informal cemeteries or areas where there were internments, specifically during the American Civil War. A great question, Emmeline. Chuck says, happy birthday on Monday. Thank you, Chuck. This is where John L. Watts rests. John L. Watts was the second keeper of Cape Fear Lights, or excuse me, Cape Fear Life Saving Service Station on East Beach. This is one man that actually died on Baldhead Island. He died in the year 1911 at the station, and his body was brought over to Baldhead Island. John L. Watts, uh, he employed Captain Charlie when Captain Charlie was a teenager at the Cape Fear Life Saving Service Station. Captain Charlie cooked and cleaned and did some odd end jobs, just kind of a handyman, an extra set of hands to help out. If you recall from yesterday's story, at first in the life saving service, these men were not employed full time. The keeper and his family stayed full time at the station, but the season was from September 1st to April 1st. So in the summer months, when there were not dangers of hurricanes or nor'easters, all the surfmen or enlisted men, they left. It was just seasonal employment for them. So Captain Charlie kind of helped out in the summers for, with Captain Watts at the station. And Captain Charlie uh, helped bring Captain Watts' body from Baldhead Island over to Southport in year 1911. This, of course, is when Captain Charlie is much older and is employed as principal keeper at Cape Fear Light Station on Baldhead Island. Uh, so a sad story. His role model uh, is, uh, you know, dies within the neighborhood and Captain Charlie has to help bring Captain Watts over. Of course, Captain Watts helped in 1893 with that longest day at Dunbar Davis that we shared with you yesterday. His epitaph says, uh, the lost to sight memory deer. Stephanie Simpkins is listening from Columbus, Ohio. Hello, Stephanie. Thank you for following along with us. Here is uh, Robert Gaskins. He was the last keeper at Old Baldy Lighthouse. He additionally served as a keeper of the Cape Fear Lights. He kind of had a dual job of keeping the beacons and buoys within the river lit while uh, maintaining Old Baldy's as a range light in the early 20th century. You can see 1935 is when he passes away. Actually, he committed suicide, believe it or not. We're not sure why uh, he resorted to such drastic measures. Uh, unfortunately, a very sad story, but we do know in his death records that he, uh, drank, he consumed a, a poisonous substance and died. 1935, the year that Old Baldy is decommissioned as a lighthouse. So Robert Merritt Gaskins. And I showed you the uh, marker for the life-saving service. This is what the marker for the lighthouse service looks like. And that is the logo of the life-saving service there. So it's nice to recognize, just as we recognize our veterans, and nice to recognize the other federal employees uh, that served on Baldhead Island in the Coast Guard and the Life Saving Service and the Lighthouse Service. Right? Got another one right up here ahead. 
is Peter Larson. Peter Larson served as an assistant keeper at Cape Fear Light Station during the tenure of Captain Charlie. And if I recall, don't hold me to it, but I'm pretty sure that uh, Peter Larson, uh, this job when he passed away in 1921, is the job uh, that Don Taylor's ancestor, Devaney Jeanette, fulfilled in the year 1921. We interviewed Don Taylor from up in the Outer Banks about her great-grandfather, Devaney Jeanette. That is the keeper that passes away atop Keep Your Light Station on Bald Head Island in the year 1932. Bring you up the hill here to another exciting uh, tombstone. It is the oldest tombstone I'm going to show you today. And his wife that rests in peace right next beside him has an important contribution to the story of Bald Head Island as well. Uh, there are some of my favorite characters. So uh, give me a shout out, y'all listening out there. I'd love to hear where you're listening from and your connection to Bald Head Island. Uh, let us know that you're staying positive and that you're uh, healthy out there. As I'm breaking you around, not too far away. I'll tell you what, this is my first time on the mainland a long time and I was hesitant. I wasn't sure if I remembered how to drive, <laughs> to drive a car rather than a uh, golf cart. Uh, but all was well. I made it here all in one piece. <laughs> all right, let's see. I'm a little turned around here, folks. Um, give me one second. That's the detriment of doing this live. And all the tombstone, of course, look the same out here. And I've gone a little too far. I see where I'm at. A little late for all the blooms, all the azaleas and camellias and all that. They're done blooming, unfortunately. All right, here we are. This is the grave of the first keeper at the original lighthouse. The lighthouse finished, he's appointed temporarily in December of 1794, officially in 1795, and he serves until 1816. That is not right, oops. 1806 is when he passes away. I found a mistake. It says 1816. He passes away in 1806. So that should uh, not read that. But October is the right month. His name was Henry Long. Jan says Salisbury, North Carolina. We visit the island several times a year. Well, thank you for listening, Jan. Well, Henry Long is, again, the first lighthouse keeper ever on Bald Head Island. He's not lighthouse keeper of Old Baldy as we know it today. He is lighthouse keeper of the original lighthouse from 1794 when it is finished around Christmas until he passes away in 1806. He is killed accidentally by his son-in-law on a hunting trip on Bald Head Island. They're hunting probably wild boar or deer for food and his, his son-in-law accidentally mistakes him for some kind of animal and shoots him. And Henry Long dies on Bald Head Island. They bring him over here where he rests in the old Smithville burying grounds. Andrea Williams is say, love me hearing the history. I'm tuning in from Bahama, North Carolina. Thank you for doing these virtual tours. Well, thank you for tuning in. Well, as I was saying, Henry Long's wife, and you can see there is his lighthouse service. I think she needs a lighthouse service model, uh, medal because here is where Rebecca, his wife, Lares, she lived to the ripe old age of 65 years passed away in 1842. Rebecca is the individual that took over responsibility for lighting the original lighthouse night after night after night after her husband over there, Henry, dies. So not only is this woman grieving, not only is she consoling her son-in-law for shooting her husband and his wife and his family, her grandchildren, in all that grief and all that sorrow, she continues to climb that original lighthouse, 84 some feet in the air, night after night, and lights the original lighthouse for the benefit, benefit, benefit of her community. So her community was so impressed by her service and her dedication to the job, they actually submitted Rebecca's name 
to be nominated to be the second keeper of the original lighthouse. It reaches, it reaches Secretary of the Treasury uh, Gallatin. He passes it on to President Thomas Jefferson. And of course, Thomas Jefferson infamously says that uh, a woman in public service is a novelty that the nation, nor am I, ready to accept. And Rebecca retires back over here to Southport. Her opportunity to serve as a federal employee and one of the first lighthouse keepers that is a female is passed up by President Thomas Jefferson. Wouldn't be until the presidency of John Quincy Adams that a woman keeper was officially nominated as a lighthouse keeper. Of course, many women, many, many women perform these duties beforehand unofficially. So Rebecca and Henry resting here in peace. Thank you for their service. All right, there's one more grave that I've accidentally passed and I'm gonna to try to find for you real quick here on live. Uh, and that is Sonny Dozier, uh, of course, uh, you know, famous uh, at Old Baldy, the longest lighthouse keeper, he served for 30 years as keeper at Old Baldy from about 1882 to about 1913, 1915. I've seen both dates, uh, it's kind of obscure in the record. Uh, if I can't find him, unfortunately, live here trying to do too many things at once, uh, we will conclude today. I, I feel pretty confident. In the meantime, if you haven't given us a shout out, let us know where you're listening from. I'd love to hear from you. Let us know what your connection is to Bald Head Island. And, uh, you know, if you uh, have a, another topic you'd like us to dwell upon, uh, we'd love to hear from you as well. Uh, love to hear feedback. It lets us know what you're interested in and what you want to pursue in the future. Uh, in the meantime, <laughs> I have not found poor old Sonny Dozier, but I have found Keeper Newton. And Keeper Newton serves right before, or excuse me, he is the first keeper at Old Baldy when she is reestablished after the American Civil War. Here is John Richard Newton. And he serves at Keeper at Old Baldy Lighthouse from 1881 to about 1882. About a year he serves as Keeper at Old Baldy. And again, it is after Old Baldy is reestablished, after being dark for about a decade or so after the American Civil War, a little more than a decade. And that is because, if you recall, Old Inlet, or the natural mouth of the Cape Fear River, was getting shallower and shallower because of New Inlet that was created by a hurricane in the year 1761, just north of uh, Baldhead Island, where kind of Fort Fisher, Federal Point, Curie Beach is today. And it is because of that New Inlet and all the water from the river leaving the river into the Atlantic Ocean before Baldhead Island that old inlet or the mouth of the river is getting shallower and shallower. So less vessels are using old inlet between Baldhead Island and Oak Island. They're using that new inlet between Curie Beach and Baldhead Island. So the Federal Point Lighthouse is way more important up there after the American Civil War than Old Baldy is. And it's not until the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers fills in new inlet with a man-made dam called the Rocks and the Swash Defense Dam System in the uh, 1880s, or 1870s and 1880s, that Old Baldy is reestablished with Mr. Newton over there as the first keeper until Sonny Dozier takes over in 1882. Here's Thomas Mann Thompson. Thomas Mann Thompson is the keeper at Old Baldy Lighthouse before the American Civil War breaks out. And Thomas Mann Thompson is the keeper that extinguishes Old Baldy's lighthouse at the orders of Governor John Ellis when the American Civil War is breaking out in April of 1861. And he would go on with his son to serve as a famous blockade runner. They were uh, pilots, as most of these lighthouse keepers were pilots uh, in their spare time, which sometimes got them into trouble. Too much they were piloting and not paying attention to their lighthouses. And uh, that would get them in trouble uh, because, you know, they needed to be uh, at the lighthouse and not uh, out gaining money. I am unfortunately, I'm so sorry, folks, I'm all turned around, but I think I have lost old uh, Sonny Dozier for good. Um, 
I'm going to try one more time here. Uh, in the meantime, if you're out there listening and haven't uh, dropped us a line, I'd love to hear from you as I'm kind of biding time here to find this one last grave. I recall I've been able to find everything else, <laughs> but poor Sunny Dozier is uh, just a little obscure for us. Found them. <laughs> Found them. There we go. Here is last but not least, dear Sonny Dozier. Sonny was his nickname, like Captain Charlie was Charles Norton Swan's nickname. His, real, his Christian name was James Henry Dozier, and he was keeper at Old Baldy after the American Civil War from about 1882 to 1913, 1915, some around that ballpark. 30 years, the longest keeper to serve at Old Baldy. He is the keeper that was photographed in 1893 by Herbert Bamber, when Herbert Bamber took a series of four photographs of Old Baldy Lighthouse in May of 1893. His daughters, Lillian and Catherine, were photographed with him. Forgot about his wife, unfortunately. Uh, and he also was a Confederate veteran. He served there in the 20th Regiment of the North Carolina Infantry, uh, and he was a first lieutenant there. He dies away in 1934, uh, not long after retiring at Old Baldy. You can see here is Lillian and here is Catherine. And they are both depicted at Old Baldy Lighthouse in those four photographs taken by Herbert Bamber in 1893. And our historic happy hour coming up where we're going to have guest speakers, John Havel and Aida Havel from up in Cape Hatteras. They're going to talk a lot about these photographs and the depictions of Lillian and Catherine, the daughters of Sonny or James Henry Dozier, keeper at Old Baldy Lighthouse. You can see behind here, he has a kind of a dual tombstone. An honest man is the noblest work of God. I really like that. All right, folks. Well, thank you for uh, joining with me uh, for this very special edition of Touring with Travis. I want to thank uh, our sponsors for the Historic Happy Hour series and just all around one of the most generous people I know, Stephen Kristen Henson, for uh, bringing me over here on their boat so we could social distance and not use the public ferry system and just be safe and, and mindful for doing this all. So I want to thank them for safely bringing me over here on their private boat. Uh, I want to thank all of you for joining us. Remind you that at oldbaldy.org we have a wonderful Earth Day sale that is occurring and uh, so check out there and support a great mission when you shop on that online store. I also want to remind you on May 20th, our virtual historic happy hour is occurring. Once again, it is virtually since we cannot be all together in person. We're going to have guest speakers, John Naida Havel, and they're going to talk about the four photographs taken of Old Baldy by Herbert Bamber in May of 1893. They are the first photographs known of Old Baldy Lighthouse. And they feature Lillian and Catherine Dozier and their father, Keeper Sonny Dozier at Old Baldy. It's a miraculous story, wonderful story, lots of history to explore. So you can go visit oldbaldy.org and sign up for our online newsletter because within that newsletter is a free code you may use to sign up for that virtual historic happy hour for free. But of course, if you would like to purchase a ticket for $15, we very much appreciate your generosity and support during these distressing times. I want to encourage all of you to stay positive and stay healthy out there. We will be taking a break for the weekend, my weekend, Sunday and Monday, and we'll be back on Tuesday for one last week of virtual programming. And after uh, next Saturday, we're going to be transitioning into the next steps for the Old Baldy Foundation trying to uh, move forward and transition, come up with a game plan on what comes next in this long and unprecedented time for our foundation, for your families, for many businesses. 
So thank you all for your support this week and the past weeks. We look forward to be meeting with you again virtually next week. And uh, stay safe and stay healthy and stay positive out there, everybody. All right.